Hello, my friends, and welcome. It's part seven of the science of getting rich, attracting abundance using our creative power. Now, if you haven't joined me before, what we're doing is I am reading the legendary book, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles, and I'm breaking it down. It's written 110 years ago. Some of the language is archaic, so I'm just bringing it up to date a little bit, making it a little easier to understand. I'm also giving you my notes. So we're reading the book. It's really the basis for every book on personal development that has to do with finances. The Secret is one, The Magic of Believing, Think and Grow Rich. The knowledge contained in this legendary book is just unbelievable. So let's get back into it, all right? We stopped yesterday with uh, efficient action. That's where we came. That's the chapter title, efficient action. You must use your thought as directed in previous chapters and begin to do what you can where you are. And you must do all that you can where you are. You can advance only by being larger than your present place. And no man is larger than his present place who leaves undone any of the work pertaining to that place. The world is advanced only by those who more than fill their present places. If no man quite filled his present place, you can see that there must be a going backward in everything. Those who do not quite fill their present places are dead weight upon society, government, commerce, and industry. They must be carried along by others at great expense. The progress of the world is slowed only by those who do not fill the places they are holding. They belong to a former age and a lower stage or plane of life. No society could advance if every man was smaller than his place. Social evolution is guided by the laws of physical and mental evolution. In the animal world, evolution is caused by excess of life. When an organism has more life than can be expressed in the functions of its own plane, it develops the organs of a higher plane and a new species is originated. There never would have been new species had there not been organisms which more than filled their places. The law is exactly the same for you. Your getting rich depends upon your applying this principle to your life, to your affairs. Every day is either a successful day or a day of failure. And it is the successful days which get you what you want. If every day is a failure, you will never get rich. Well, if every day is a success, you can't fail to get rich. If there is something that may be done today and you do not do it, you have failed in so far as that thing is concerned and the consequences may be more disastrous than you imagine. You cannot foresee the results of even the most trivial act. You do not know the workings of all the forces that have been set moving in your behalf. Much may, much may be depending on your doing some simple act. It may be the very thing which is to open the door of opportunity to the very great possibilities. It's what I always say, the action step. Everyone misses the action step. Otherwise, you're just daydreaming. You're never going to manifest without the action step. You have to start moving towards your goals. You have to start living as if you had it. You can never know all the combinations in which the universe, God, source is making for you in this world of things and of things and of human affairs. You neglect or you fail to do some small thing and it can cause a very long delay in getting what you want. Do every day all that can be done that day. There is, however, a limitation or qualification of the above that you must take into account. You're not to overwork, nor to rush blindly into your business in the efforts to do the greatest possible number of things in the shortest possible time. You are not to do tomorrow's work today, nor to do a week's work in a day. It's really not the number of things you do, but the efficiency of each separate action that counts. Every act is, in itself, 
either a success or a failure. Every act is, in itself, either effective or inefficient. Every inefficient act is a failure. And if you spend your life in doing inefficient acts, your whole life will be a failure. The more things you do, the worse for you if all your acts are inefficient ones. On the other hand, every efficient act is a success in itself. And if every act of your life is an efficient one, your whole life must be a success. The cause of failure is doing too many things in an inefficient manner and not doing enough things in an efficient way. You will see that it is self-evident that if you do not do any efficient, you will see that it is a self-evident proposition that if you do not do any inefficient acts, and if you do a sufficient number of efficient acts, you will become rich. If now it is possible for you to make each act an efficient one, you see again that the getting of riches is reduced to an exact science like mathematics. The matter turns then on the questions, whether you can make each separate act a success in itself. And this you can certainly do. You can make each act a success because all power is working with you and all power cannot fail. Power is at your service and to make each act efficient, you have only to put power into it. Every action you take is either strong or weak. And when everyone is strong, you're acting in the certain way, which will make you rich. Every act can be made strong and efficient by holding your purpose while you're doing it and putting the whole power of your faith and purpose into it. It is at this point that the people fail who separate mental power from personal action. They use the power of the mind in one place and at one time, and they act in another place at another time. So their acts are not successful in themselves. Too many of them are inefficient. But if all power goes into every act, no matter how commonplace, every act will be a success in itself. And as in the nature of things, every success opens the way to another. Your progress towards what you want and the progress of what you want towards you will become increasingly rapid. Remember that successful action is culminative in its results. Since the desire for more life is inherent in all things, when a man begins to move towards larger life, more things attach themselves to him and the influence of his desire is multiplied. Do every day all that you can do that day and do each act in an efficient manner. In saying that you must hold your vision while you're doing each act, however trivial or commonplace, I do not mean to say that it is necessary at all times to see the vision distinctly to its smallest detail. It should be the work of your leisure hours to use your imagination on the details of your vision and to contemplate them until they are firmly fixed upon your memory. If you wish speedy results, spend practically all your spare time in this practice. By continuous contemplation, you will get the picture of what you want, even to the smallest details. So firmly fixed upon your mind and so completely transferred to the mind of formless substance that in your working hours, you need only to mentally refer to the picture. I call it an anchor image. Just to create an image in your mind, supercharge it with feeling and emotion. And that's what you go to whenever you need to get that burst of positive energy, that burst of energy towards your goals. Uh, is an anchor image. Contemplate your picture in your leisure hours until your consciousness is so full of it that you can grasp it instantly. You will become so enthused with its bright promises that the mere thought of it will call forth the strongest energies of your whole being. You will be flooded with emotion. And we all know, like I always say, emotion and thought together creates magic. We have 60,000 thoughts a day, and most of them are gone. They just disappear. But any thought 
that we supercharge with emotion. And most of the time it's the negative ones. I don't want this. Please don't let this happen. Oh God, please send me this. But if you do the same thing with positive emotion, you can change your life. You can change your existence. You can transform your existence. So let's repeat the syllabus again, and we'll slightly change the statements, bringing it closer to the points that we've now reached. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. Man can form things in his thoughts and by impressing his thoughts upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks to be created. In order to do this, man must pass from the competitive to the creative mind. He must form a clear mental picture of the things he wants to do. And with faith and purpose, he must do all that can be done each day, doing each separate thing in an efficient manner. Next, Wallace talks about getting into the right business. Success in any particular business depends for one thing upon your possessing in a well-developed state the faculties required in that business. Without good musical faculties, no one can succeed as a teacher of music. Without well-developed mechanical faculties, no one can achieve great success in any of the mechanical trades. Without tact, no one can succeed in mercantile pursuits. And on and on, he gives some examples here. There are musicians who have remarkable talent and who remain poor. There are blacksmiths, carpenters, and on and on who have excellent mechanical ability, but who do not get rich. And there are merchants with good faculties for dealing with men who nevertheless fail. The different faculties are tools. It is essential to have good tools, but it is also essential that the tools should be used in the right way. One man can take a sharp saw, a square, a good plane, and build a handsome article of furniture. Another man can take the same tools and set to work to duplicate the article, but his production will be botched. He does not know how to use good tools in a successful way. The various faculties of your mind are the tools with which you must work, with the tools you must use to make you rich. It will be easier for you to succeed if you get into a business for which you're well equipped with your mental tools. Generally speaking, you will do best in that business which will use your strongest faculties, the one for which you are naturally best fitted. But there are limitations to this statement. No man should regard his vocation as being, er, being fixed by the tendencies with which he was born. You can get rich in any business, for if you have not the right talent, for you can develop that talent. It merely means that you will have to make your tools as you go along, instead of confining yourself to the use of those with which you're already born. It will be easier for you to succeed in the vocation for which you already have the talents in a well-developed state, but you can succeed in any vocation for you can develop any rudimentary talent. And there is no talent of which you have not at least a little bit. You will get rich most easily in point of effort if you do that for which you are best fitted, but you will get rich most satisfactorily if you do that which you want to do. Doing what you want to do is life, and there is no real satisfaction in living if we are compelled to be forever doing something which we don't want to do, and we can never do what we want to do. And it is certain that you can do what you want to do. The desire to do it is proof that you have within you the power which can do it. Desire is a manifestation of power. And I always say de desire is the starting mechanism of manifestation, desire and intention. The desire to play music is the power which can play music seeking expression and development. The desire to invent mechanical devices is the mechanical talent seeking expression and development. Where there is no power, either developed or undeveloped, to do a thing, there is never any desire to do that thing. And where there is strong desire to do a thing, 
It is certain proof that the power to do it is strong and only requires to be developed and applied in the right way. All things being equal, it is best to select the business for which you have the best developed talent. But if you have a strong desire to engage in any particular line of work, you should select that work as the ultimate end at which you aim. You, you can do what you want to do, and it is your right and privilege to follow the business or avocation for which you will be most pleased. You are not obligated to do what you do not like to do, and you should not do it except as a means to bring you to the doing of the things that you want to do. If there are past mistakes whose consequences have placed you in an undesirable business or environment, you may be obliged for some time to do what you don't like to do, but you can make the doing of it pleasant by knowing that it is making it possible for you to come to the doing of what you want to do. If you feel that you're not in the right job, don't act too hastily in trying to get into another one. The best way generally to change business or environment is by growth. Don't be afraid to make a sudden and radical change if the opportunity is presented. If you feel after careful consideration that it's the right thing, do it. But never take sudden or radical action when you're in, to, in doubt as to the wisdom of doing something. There is never any hurry on the creative plane and there is no lack of opportunity. When you get out of the competitive mind, you will understand that you never need to act hastily. No one else is going to beat you to the thing you want to do. There is enough for everyone. If one space is taken, another and better one will be open for you, just a little farther down the line. There is always plenty of time when you're working towards your goal, when you're being successful. When you are in doubt, wait. Fall back on the contemplation of your vision and increase your faith and purpose. And by all means, in times of doubt and indecision, cultivate gratitude. A day or two spent in contemplating the vision of what you want and in earnest thanksgiving that you are going to get it will bring your mind into such close relationship with the supreme that you will make no mistake when you do act. There is a mind which knows all there is to know, and you can come into close unity with this mind by faith and the purpose to advance in life if you have deep gratitude. Mistakes come from asking, acting hastily or from acting in fear or doubt or in forgetfulness of the right motive, which is more life to all and less to none. As you go on in a certain way, opportunities will come to you in increasing numbers and you will need to be very steady in your faith and your purpose. And you'll need to keep in close touch with the all mind, with gratitude. Gratitude is so important. Gratitude, being thankful for what you have now will get you more to be thankful for. Do all that you can do in a perfect manner every day, but do it without haste. Do it without worry. Do it without fear. Go as fast as you can, but never hurry. Remember that in the moment you begin to hurry, you cease to be a creator and become a competitor. You drop back down to that old plane again. Whenever you find yourself hurrying, stop. Fix your attention on the mental image of the thing you want and begin to give thanks. Now he says here, begin to give thanks that you are getting it. I think it's better be you start giving thanks for having it. You have to start acting like you already have it. That's what makes things change. That's what does the trick to your subconscious. So I would say, instead of, and begin to give thanks that you're getting it. I would say, and begin to give thanks that you have it. Because that is the magic, the idea, the feeling that you have you already have it. How would you feel when you have it? And start feeling that way now. And things really change fast. The exercise of gratitude will never fail. It will never fail to strengthen your faith.
It will never fail to renew your purpose. Write down all the things you're grateful for every day. I do it every day as part of my morning routine. One of those exercises is I just write for 10 minutes and just fill page after page. If I usually can do two pages um, of all the things I'm grateful for. And they change from day to day, obviously. But don't tell me you don't have anything to be grateful for. You're alive. You're awake. You know, you got up this morning. That's the biggest win of all. Think of how many people that didn't happen for who went to sleep last night, never woke up. So you have things to be grateful for. A lot of things. If you have a home, if you have food, if you have a job, if you have a a, a partner, whatever it is, we have so much to be grateful for. The problem is we want more and more and more. We're always running after the next thing and the next thing. And I want this and I need that to make me happy. That's a hamster wheel of misery that you can't get off of if you do that. Tomorrow, we're going to be going into uh, what's called the impression of increase. Now, he talks about whether you change your job or not, your actions for the present moment must be those that are pertaining to the business for which you're in now. So we'll go into that tomorrow, and it starts to get really deep, okay? We go into that, and then after, he goes into, uh, talks about the advancing of man. And like I said, anytime... Waddles talks about the future. This book was 110 years ago. He's spot on. So it's really fantastic. We'll get into that. Okay. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, I will be back in the morning with another episode of How to Be Happy. Keep the messages coming. You guys seem to like that. uh, And I'm glad. So we have three parts of that. Uh, Keeping happy. How to, not keeping happy, how to be happy. Parts one, two, and three. That's every morning at 10. We're doing a a show at 10 a.m. That's every day. Uh, we're doing how to be happy this week. And then at night, we're doing a different show at seven. That happens to be the science of getting rich until we're finished with the book. But we're going to try to do two broadcasts each and every day at those times, 10 and seven Eastern standard time. That way you get used to it. You know that it's going to be there at that time. You can always watch the replay later, but this is fantastic knowledge. Our goal in this community is to give you the tools that you need to transform your life. Sounds like a lot. It's a big, it's a big promise, but I've spent 30 years teaching people about the mind, professional sports teams, athletes, actors, actresses, presidents, prime ministers. If there's one thing I know, it's about mind power. And the most successful people know the same thing. They know how to harness that mind power and direct it where it matters in their life. If you've not joined our Facebook community, you really should. That's where it all happens. We are like-minded people. We are banded together. We are helping each other, supporting each other, empowering each other to reach our goals and attain our dreams. We would love to have you. It's facebook.com slash groups slash students of self-empowerment. We're actually just starting a quit smoking program in the community. I posted a question the other day. What was one, what would be one bad habit if you gave it up today would make your life easier? The overwhelming choice was smoking. I gave up smoking years ago, uh, right before I gave up alcohol. So what I thought we could do in the community, uh, all the people who want to smoke, we'll get all the people who have quit smoking together and we will help them, mentor them, uh, be there for them, accountability partners. I think it's a great way in this community to give back and help each other. This community really is a great place to be. So come join us. It's facebook.com slash groups slash students of self empowerment. Also, make sure you take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube channel, over 300 videos. We need some more subscribers though. And when we hit a thousand, we can monetize. And again, this, this community is out of love and it's for you. We spend hours. I do, my staff does. Uh, It's not a money-making proposition. We're doing it for you. If you want to help out, you can do that by liking and sharing and commenting, inviting people to our community, subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing our videos. That's how we get the word out. So join me. It's youtube.com slash official. And finally, the holidays are almost here this year. Instead of giving mom perfume and dad an ugly tie, why not give the gift of transformation, the gift of personal development, the gift of living a life by design and not by default. Personal development. No gift that you give of material worldly things is ever going to equal the gift of transformation, giving somebody the life of their dreams. 
the dream that they thought was dead, that's back in the dusty recesses of their mind to know no matter what your age, I don't care. I have clients in their seventies. Think about that. There is no expiration date on you. There's no date that says uh, after this, I can't learn new things. I can't become a better me. That's bullshit. Give the gift of personal development. Give the gift of self-empowerment. Go to brentweb.com. You can see my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. If you go to brentweb.com slash shop, you will see all my books, courses, and that sort of thing. So take a look. Uh, it makes a fantastic gift for the holidays. Give the gift of transformation. Sprintweb.com. So I'll be back tomorrow with part eight of the science of getting rich. We're getting close to the end here. I'll also be back in the morning with a new edition of Brent Live. We're finishing up uh, how to be happy. So that's all I got for you today. I want you to go out and enjoy yourself. Remember, you're alive and you're well. You have so much to be grateful for. So don't worry. Be happy and feel good. See you tomorrow.